Hi, this is John with a shot of the scriptures. I'm uh, going to read from uh, the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 5. And it says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Uh, this was Jesus talking about himself. And uh, why did he... Uh, make this comparison uh, to, for himself to be like a uh, uh, the branches of a, uh, a vine plant, a grape. And well, one thing is uh, grapes were very common. And, you know, most people drank wine uh, there in Israel during the time of Jesus. Fact is, uh, uh, they didn't have good water purification at the time. And if they uh, weren't wanting to drink uh, wine and they didn't know about the source of the water, then they would take uh, three parts water and one part wine and drink that. And you might say, uh, won't that make the water sweet? Yeah, and actually probably tastes pretty well. But um, it, uh, w the alcohol that was in the wine, we are talking about not just grape juice, but alcoholic wine. The alcohol that was in the wine acted as an antiseptic against anything that could have been in the water that could have hurt them. And it was very, very effective. And uh, so, uh, but now uh, Jesus is saying, I'm the vine and you are the branches. And it says, he um, who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. So that means that as Christians, if you are a Christian, if you are in Christ, then uh, it is imperative that you bear fruit. Now, what uh, fruit is Jesus talking about there? Well, he's uh, talking about a couple things. First, he's talking about uh, when uh, he summarized the Ten Commandments, he said uh, you need to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. So uh, if you are showing uh, the fact that you love God by your actions and uh, that uh, you're devoting yourself to God and then you're doing things to help your neighbor, then those would be good fruit. And also, uh, the book of Galatians has the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, these are attributes that uh, your Holy Spirit uh, has uh, that put that is put into a, a born-again Christian. And that the primary one there is love, but also joy and peace and patience and kindness and self-control and gentleness. And uh, I'm sure I left one or two out. But uh, you see, these are attributes that are not uh, attributes that are common in the world. And uh, these are things that are very distinctive of a true Christian. Now, there's a lot of people out there that say that they're a Christian, but they don't show a lot of, of uh, patience, or they don't show a lot of uh, joy or love. And uh, true Christians typically do. I'm not saying that they won't get under situations where they didn't get, uh, the, where they don't get uh, upset, or they don't get anxious, or they don't uh, get depressed. Um, you know, we're just as human as anyone else, but we have that supernatural Holy Spirit living within us. And uh, that is also referred to as the Spirit of Christ. So if you uh, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you make him the life example for yourself for the rest of your life. And uh, you receive him unto yourself. You ask to be saved. And uh, you basically, you know, accept Jesus into your heart. Uh, that occurs when you receive the Holy Spirit. And um, the fact is, um, the Holy Spirit is also referred to in the Scripture as the Spirit of Christ. Uh, the reason uh, that can occur is the fact that there is only one God. And uh, there, we have one God that uh, shows himself as different persons or different personalities. So we had God the Father, uh, God uh, the Son, and that's Jesus Christ, and then God the Holy Spirit. And uh, God may uh, exhibit uh, like three personalities or three persons, but uh, he is, you know, still just the, the one God. 
and uh, it says, um, <clears throat> uh, He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. You know, uh, how can we be a Christian if we're not close to Jesus Christ? And what do you do to get close to Jesus Christ if you're a Christian? Well, you stay in the Word of God. You read the Bible as frequently as you can. And you pray all the time, multiple times, every day. And then you get actively involved with a fellowship of believers. Uh, a church and uh, God's people getting together and worshiping together. And uh, if you do those things, then uh, you're going to... Uh, hope you know basically hope that you find a good Christ-centered church, and then uh, you will remain strong in that relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're born again, if you're not born again, then you need to call out to Jesus Christ and ask Him uh, to uh, save you of your sins and to repent of your sins and to receive Him to yourself. Uh, Get deep into the Word of God and let the Word of God get deep into you. That's a shot of Scripture for today. Thanks.